you haven't seen problems yet. I was in the Navy for four years. I was on a tanker. I saw the aircraft carriers. We refueled them all night long. I saw the airplanes flying and slanting. The ordinances they had 50 years ago. They got stuff that I don't even know about now. Submarines, one sub, is able to rock this whole world, just like the Bible says, a drunken man, knock it off its axis, one sub. And just look at what happened to Israel, how the devil is. He does not care about anyone or anything. But I'm not going to go into all that right now. Because you know what? No matter what the enemy is doing, God is always pouring out his blessings to his people. God is always keeping. We got a blessing on this line right now. Caleb, say hello to everybody, my brother. Hello. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. It's so good to hear your voice, my brother. I tell you, we serve a good God. Amen. He is so merciful and so great and so good. Your blessing on the line, Brother Phil. I'll never forget that morning we all sat around having breakfast at that place. And Caleb began to talk. See, you kind of know where a person's at by what they speak of this word. Because word has to become your life. Because it's the only word that's going to help you get through what the enemy is going to put on this world. And that brother, that young brother, I don't know how old he was, it was then, maybe eight, nine years old, 15 now. We all had to sit back. Me, Dave, and Red Wine. I don't know, but well, I know Phil must have known, but he was the one that he got it from. So you, you know that he had to know. But it was amazing. But you know what? God's word is true. Train them up. When they're a child. And they'll never depart. You better hold on to these words that are in that Bible and that God tells us, because I guess it's the only power that can help you in this situation we have. I can't thank God enough. Brother Phil, will you open us up with a word of prayer, please, my brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Pastor. Dear Lord, we thank you for another opportunity for the saints to be gathered together. We thank you, Lord, for having kept us this week, watched over us, our loved ones, and our family. We thank you, Lord, we're standing in need of more of you. We not only ask for information, but for revelation. Lord, we thank you and we know that you have placed our spirits and our bodies at the time that we were born for, so that we can be here for such a time as this. We ask, Lord, that that which will be said and spoken or testimony that is given that uh, it be received and know that you are stirring us God to reach out and uh, touch the lives of people that we know first and then uh, in our neighborhood and reach out and, uh, and touch those that are distant from us. Lord, that's contrary. You said uh, the love, the, um, and I said unto you to love your enemies and uh, you, uh, pray for them, bless those that curse you and uh, do good to those that hate you. And you said um, that your word would be, um, 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 that you would stir up, make us whole, make us what you need. You said that uh, those that despitefully use, excuse me, those that uh, despitefully use you in persecution, uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward, Lord, to being, uh, that you said that your children, that, they, that you may be the children 
of your heavenly Father, which is in heaven. You went on to say that we're to be perfect, because your Father in heaven is perfect. And so, Lord, and that, that perfection is talking about maturity, and we're to grow up in the Spirit of God. And we're no longer to be uh, 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 on, the, on, the, uh, on the bottle, sucking the bottle, Lord, on the, uh, but the sincere Word of God should be in our heart and govern our thoughts, our actions, our attitudes, our, our emotions, our facial expressions, our voice, our tone, all those things, God, we ask them to be, give us the mind of Christ. We ask that you bless those that are on the line, bless those that are on the way to church. We ask, God, that you every aspect of the service uh, that uh, you will anoint and allow it to be a blessing. Uh, and we'll receive it because we come hungry. And we thank you for this fellowship and for this time. We thank you for a time to go closer to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank God for Jesus. We're going to open up any any songs, any praises, any testimonies. Did you want to say something, Paul? <laughs> you raised your hand, but I was right in the middle of what I was saying. But we praise God. You know, go right ahead. God bless you. I was pointing at you because I said, you call in the spirit this here. <laughs> Hamas situation with Israel. You know, I thank the Lord for that because, you know, I want to give honor to God for being so thoughtful and keeping me in mind and bring me back in here so I could uh, be here to serve, not serve, that's a Freudian slip, to be here to. Uh, the fellowship with him, you know, and uh, starting to believe more and more and more and more and more because I got a little uh, transient in my faith and my belief. When I was going through a period of unbelief, really getting attacked spiritually in my mind, but I think what I wanted to say was I was going to stand up last week and sing a song. I'm going to sing it. Because the Spirit of the Lord told me to hold up on it. The words are, encourage my soul, help me to carry on, but my way is dark. I'm still far from dawn. Now, I was going to say, the storm is passing over, and the Spirit said, hold up, stop. Don't do that. Don't, do, don't, 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 don't say that, because you don't know if the storm is passing over. You don't know, you're singing a song, you're trying to encourage yourself, but let me say something to you. Don't. Let me show you something. Then for me to look at the television a couple of days ago and see missiles coming from our master Israel, I must say, my mouth was hanging wide open because I was not believing it. I had stopped believing it. I ain't stop believing. Let's just put it there. Stop believing in my head, not my heart. The storm is not passing over. I think it's just getting started. So let's thank God for all He has done for us. Thank Him for uh, keeping power. And thank you, Jesus, for praying. Amen. Amen. I have a song. Amen. Amen. I have a song. Go ahead, Audrey. Okay, go ahead, Audrey.
morning, there was blood all over the bed, and she uh, they, she had had to go to the hospital. And when and uh, when she got there, they they uh, per, uh, pronounced her with u uterine cancer, cancer in the uterus. So that's that's where she's at right now. So you know, I haven't talked to her or or, or him of, you know since then, but. But just, just keep her in prayer that the Lord will bring it through and for it, because he's already been coming through for testimony. The Lord's been bringing her through for testimony and keeping her and blessing her. And also her daughter, uh, my, my brother's wife, she had COVID. Um, I'm not sure. She might be just coming out of it now. She had quarantine for, what, eight, eight days or whatever, and that's been a little while. But keep her in prayer, too. So keep, keep them in prayer and and, and, and thank God because we know that we don't, we're not going through this alone. We got Jesus mainly, but then we can pray for one another and the Lord and, uh, honors our prayers. And I just thank God for Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise his name. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Any other songs? Any other testimonies? I tell you, I have a few that I just want to give you. Amen. Glory and honor and thanks. I have a song. Oh, go right ahead. I have a song. Go right ahead. Okay, we'll pray the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, the, uh, the the three Hebrew boys they uh, sit, um, talk to the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, answered the king and said unto the Nebuchadnezzar, said, uh, "We are not careful to answer thee in this manner. But so be our God, whom we serve, is able to look, deliver us from the burning." fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up, even if. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now, I'm losing back. I stood on the stage night after night, reminding the broken it will be all right. But right now, oh, right now, I just can't. It's easy to say when there's nothing to bring me down. But what will I say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now? I know you're able and I know you can. Lay through the fire of your mighty hand. But even if you don't, my hope's in you alone. They say it only takes a little bit to move a mountain. Well, good thing, a little faith. It's all I have right now. God, when you choose to leave mountains unmoved, oh, give me the strength to be able to see in the well with my soul. I know you're able, I know you can. Stay through the fire.
And how well do we know about that situation, Lord? Because even I have one that is, is behind and not grasping things the way that uh, a four-year-old should. But you know we got a throne of grace to take everything, every problem, every situation, everything in each and every one of our lives, we can lay it before you and walk away knowing you're going to take care of it in your time. So those burdens and those cares and those situations that want to distract us and, and try and torment us and try to oppress us will not do it. He said that you sent Jesus of Nazareth, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, to help each and every one that from the oppressions and the suppressions and healings that we all need in our bodies that are failing us as we get older and older. Father God, send your anointing right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, to strengthen us in our bodies so that we might praise and thank you, Lord, to give us some comfort as only you can in the things that the enemy might be attacking us with. Lord, we ask that you might bless each and every individual, no matter where they're at, no matter what they're doing, no matter what they're going through, that they might get closer to you and get to know you more and more. And we love you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. And we do all these things in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let everybody say amen. 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 And we ask that he bind up anything that's not of him, that his word might come forth in me first and straight on in everyone else. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can't thank God enough for Jesus. I tell you, I can't praise him enough. We got so much to thank him for, for being in our lives and blessing us. And I tell you, the Lord is so real. And it's such a blessing to have him in our lives. Friday. Friday. The Lord really, as he does in my life, blessed us in so many ways. And I'm showing you as also. And as we were talking about the things that the world is going through, Friday, I went home Friday night. And about 9 o'clock, I went to sleep. Nobody felt tired. So I went to sleep about 9 o'clock. The Lord woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I've never done this before. But I started reading the Word. And he took me into what I'm going to minister today. And I was just surprised that he had done that in that way. And then... You know, when the morning came and everything, I laid down. And when morning came, I turned on the news. Because I'm, I'm always listening to the news and watching. And Jesus said, watch and pray. You know, and Jerusalem really is the focal point of, yes. of God's heart. And that's key. Jerusalem is the key to everything that he's written in that Bible. The pray for the peace, peace of Jerusalem. And I hear, first thing in the morning, 5,000 missiles were shot at Jerusalem and, and shot at, at Israel as a nation and all their different, all their different uh, places. And praise the Lord, we got another blessing coming, Isaiah coming in the door. I can't thank God enough. God bringing his people and God touching hearts. God's dealing with people. You know, so we're going to let the spirit of Jesus be what's in each and every one of us, our hearts. So that love that only he has in his kingdom can touch every one of them. We don't need no flesh doing nothing. All we need to do is praise God for everything he's doing for us. Love you, girl. Anyway, woke me up 4 o'clock this morning, turned on the news, and Israel was at war. What's his name? Netanyahu declared war. But Myers, what do you call it? I always get these names. Hamas. Hamas is always starting. You can always recognize the devil when he does something. Because you're always going to sneak and do it. You're not going to do it straight up. You're always going to get the civilians the women and children, and he's going to attack them. And also, when they do it. Now, Israel just had Yom Kippur. 
which is the holiest day in that nation. It is the day of atonement when they sacrifice their lambs, which were a representation of Jesus. But they're blinded right now for one reason, that the Lord can save us Gentiles. And guess what? When the Lord saves us Gentiles, he's going to turn back to his Israel, Israel. He's going to turn back to him. Now Hamas and all those guys in the Palestines, Palestinians, people don't realize. Before God did what he said he was going to do, and it is, it is in, it is in Isaiah 66 chapter. Shall a nation be born in a day. Israel was created in 131 seconds in Hoboken, New York by the League of Nations. God fulfilling his word. Never in the history of mankind has any nation lost its language, lost its people, lost its religion and came back to that land and reconstructed. But God said it would happen. It has happened. And everything he wrote in this Bible, this holy book, is going to come to pass. But we're blessed because the one that wrote the holy book is willing to talk to each and every one of you and willing to guide and lead you out of anything that you might be stuck in that is contrary to his will. Because he's told me, I know my thoughts towards you. My thoughts are of good and not of evil to bring you to an expected end. That end is to make you like Jesus. And he is God, so he can do anything he want to do. It's no limits to what he wants to do. If he puts a word perfect in his Bible, know this day he can make someone perfect. He's God. Never doubt him. I'm not talking about what you think or even what I think or what anybody thinks. If he said it, he can do it. All things are possible to them that believe. So keep your faith and trust God to do what nobody and nothing can do but him. Because he wants some people that got some faith in his word. Did it on the anniversary of Yom Kippur, him and his sneaky self. Fifty years ago, they tried the same thing to take over Israel. Well, you ought to see the story of that. I'm not going to go in there. I got a message to preach. To preach. But God, God did miracles, all kinds of miracles. I'll give you one quick one. And this is the Arabs and the Israelis saying it. There were two Israelis pinned down in, 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 that, in one of those wars. They were fighting. They were running out of ammunition. And the Arabs had them. There was hundreds of Arabs. They were shooting at them. And they were running out of, out of ammunition. All of a sudden, all of the Arabs started throwing up their weapons, hollering, screaming, and running. Years later, they interviewed the Jews, they interviewed the Arabs. The Jews didn't know what happened. You know what the Arabs said? They saw a giant. Not one person. I'm talking about a bunch of them testified. They saw a giant. And they ran. God has not stopped his miracles. For Israel and for us. He will do it. All we got to do is trust in him and believe in him. And he will do everything that he promised for his people. I was just thanking God for all of the different confirmations that he made for this man. Arthur was talking and everything about this. And I can't thank God enough for the confirmation. Then I talked to Dave this morning. He gave more confirmation. 
And, and I just can't, can't thank him enough because, you know, we serve a real guy. And I'm going to give a title to this. Give yourself wholly to Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about the holy H-O-L-Y. I'm talking about the holy W-H-O-L-L-Y. That means all your confidence, all your trust, all your belief, everything in your heart that you have to give, give it to Jesus. Trust him. Listen to his word. Let him tell you what he's going to do by his word for his people. I want to start at Numbers 13. Because we have... You know, it also tells us that the things that happened to Israel, we ought to pay attention to. I'm talking about the Old Testament all, all the way back. Uh, Brother Phil was talking about how um, the, um, you know, the, the three boys, the three boys was in the fiery furnace, in the, but the fourth one, he was, the Lord was in there with him. You know, the same Lord that was in the fiery furnace with them is in, in your life with us. But he had dealt with me about Numbers 13. Let's go to Numbers 13 and start at the first verse. And this is about two other people. One named Caleb and one named Joshua. Numbers 13, first verse. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall you send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of, of Paran, all those men which were the head of Israel. And I just want to jump right on down because we don't need their names because guess what? Each and every one of our names are the same that are in here because we are all of the tribe of Judah, which our Savior has brought us into. But I want to go down to verse number 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get thee up this way southward and go up into the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land, and what the land is they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. You know, you can come on with your own opinion of what this is. I want to send you out, and I want you to look out for what is done. Now, you remember, these people have been brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. They saw the, the darkness and the light. They saw the, all the ten plagues that were put on Egypt to free them. They saw the hand of the Lord in a way that we have never seen it in the flesh. But the flesh cannot hold the things that the Lord does in front of it. That's why you must be born of his spirit and you must feed, let him feed his spirit by his word and his power. Anyway, they saw they had the, they had the, the cloud by doing the day to keep from the sun off of them. They had fire by night to keep the heat and everything. They had the Red Sea open up for them. And they walked through the Red Sea. But they still were full of doubt and fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love and a sound mind to go through the things that we have to go through. And Moses sent them to spy out the Canaan and said unto them, get up this way southward up to the mountain and see the land that is that the people dwell there in, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities that be they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, that and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether it be wood therein or not, 
and be of good courage and bring the fruit of the land. Now, the time was the time of first ripe grapes. So they went up and they searched the land in the wilderness of Zin and Riyadh as men came to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron where Amen, Shishak, and Tamal, the children of Anak were, the giants, all these powerful things that were before them, all these things that caused fear and frustration in their lives. Now, Hebron was built seven years before Zoe in Egypt, and I want to skip down from there. Go down to 17. Okay. I want to go down to 26. And they went and came to Moses and to all the congregation of, the, of Israel. They already went out and came back. And to the wilderness, Param and Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And, and they told them and said, We came unto the land whither thou sendest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. God gave them that. God has given us his kingdom, where his presence is and his power is, where we can have the peace, love, and joy that is not out there in that world. No matter how much money, no matter how beautiful your wife is, no matter how handsome your husband is, if you got little angels as children, there's nothing in the world that can compare with the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ being in your life. And they told him and said, We came to the land whether thou sendest us and surely flowed with milk and honey. Nevertheless, the people be strong. Here's fear that dwelleth in the land. And the cities are walled. Here's you can't get through. He ain't hearing your prayers. And very great. But you know, God gave us the Holy Ghost, the comforter that could dwell within us. And you know, it's no power that can stop him from getting to the throne of grace where Jesus Christ is sitting right now with all authority and power, making intercession for each and every one of us for the situations that we might be in. He might not change them at the moment, but his word is good enough for me. You know what? I found out something. He don't lie, and you know he's going to bring to pass everything he said. 